On March the 8th, 2016, a vehicle was found burned in Amsterdam with the decapitated body of 23-year-old Nabil Amzieb on board. The next day, around 4 a.m., it is possible to see, thanks to the video surveillance images, a masked person with a quick walk holding a bag in his hand. He arrives in front of a shisha bar, well known in the Amsterdam underworld, and takes an object out of his bag, puts it on the sidewalk, and quickly flees. Around 7 o'clock in the morning, passers-by made a very macabre discovery. You need to get here as soon as possible. We found a head. Is it a human head or an animal head, sir? A human head. Quickly, a silent march was organized in tribute to the victim Nabil, also known under the nickname of Langer. This terrible discovery of a head shocked everyone. This is a shock to public order. At first, it was not clear to anyone. Why did the latter become a target, especially since he was perceived by his entourage as being a real keeper? In an article published in 2013, we can even see Nabil with a drill in hand, posing with a very wide smile. He was doing an internship in the construction field in a building company. Everything seemed to be laid out for him. Talking to people, which I do quite well. However, his path seemed to have taken a very different turn. Most people in the milieu were convinced of Nabil's involvement in the Mokro War. Convictions reinforced by the discovery of his head, deposited in front of the shisha bar, the Fayrouz Lounge, iconic place of gathering of the guys gravitating around the clan Hose. As a reminder, Hose is involved in a gang conflict against Gwinnett Martha's camp. The Hose group suspects the other side of having snatched a batch of cocaine in 2012 in the port of Antwerp, a coup in which various Amsterdam protagonists had jointly invested. Since that day, a wave of liquidations has been spreading in order to take over the milieu. To achieve this, each side must recruit unscrupulous young people who are willing to pull any firearm trigger. One of them is Nabil. He then lived in a secluded neighborhood of Kattenberg, where other guys from the eastern islands of Amsterdam spent their time. Nabil and his friends are directed towards the criminal circuit in the camp of Hose, who delegates its direction to his relatives in freedom, that is, Abdel Hamid and Omar. It is precisely through the latter that Nabil carries out a mission to liquidate a rival, Aeneas Lomb. It's November 2015, and Omar is running the operation remotely. An ambush is set up for Aeneas by his own friend, Danny, which leaves the field open to the rival team. Everyone is waiting for the target to return home by train. After receiving the green light from Omar, two teammates jump out of the bushes and liquidate him. One of them is Nabil, as confirmed later. And so Nabil's head, laid down so it looks through the windows of the shisha bar, seems to be the means chosen to send a strong signal to the rival camp. The protagonists of this act have never been found due to a cruel lack of evidence. Moreover, the last time Nabil was seen was four days before, when he was leaving his apartment in the Kattenbergerstraat. He went that night to the El Guapo Café. He leaves the premises shortly after 9pm. There has been no further contact with the latter since. It is remarkable, almost unbelievable, that the Volkswagen Caddy, burned on the parking lot of Amsterdam with Nabil's body inside, was used as an observation vehicle by the judicial police of Utrecht before it was stolen. 
On the evening of the action, this vehicle is found to be parked in southeast Amsterdam around 1 a.m. He stays there for an hour before exploding. The fleeing man almost seems to forget about his bike. Finally, he gets on it and rides as fast as he can through the streets. As for the shisha bar, it has never opened its doors since that day. It should be remembered that most of the people involved in the Mokro War have known each other for a long time. As a result, they are sometimes even forced to eliminate their childhood friends. As far as the leaders of the two respective camps are concerned, they grew up together, having played in the same futsal club in the Pape district. Ho's financial situation was quite different from that of his peers. Ho's father worked as an educator at the sport hall in Pipe, now called Sport Centrum. This is surely where a certain passion for the sport comes from for the young Ho's, who has the ambition to grow the local club in the neighborhood, known as ZVVT Knuppunt. Despite the conflict that has broken out between the youth of the neighborhood, a lot of crime money is invested in this club in order to revive it and make it rise to national level. For the investigators, it is mainly a toy of hose, thus realizing his childhood dreams. The club is, for years, largely financed by his group, which pays astronomical sums of money from drugs in what attracts the best players from all over the country, but also from Belgium, and just to come and play in the prestigious pipe in Amsterdam. The success is so great, with usually full stands, that the games have to be played in a much larger hall, in Sporthallen Zuid, from 2013, in a process of professionalization. It is also during this same year that the accountant of the group of Hoes was liquidated by the rival camp. At the waterfront dance party in the Maritime Museum, two rival gangs occupy VIP tables, with other top footballers in attendance. When Suhail is suddenly wiped out by Gwinnett Martha's team, not to mention that even Aeneas Lomp was on the guest list. Followed a certain sadness in the milieu, and especially a bad news for the club, which Suhail sponsored for years. As the finance man of the Hose Group, he had been ensuring that the money flow in the club was in order for years. However, the vacancy does not remain empty for long, because according to sources, another criminal from the Hose entourage takes over the role of financial director, Anas alias Bololo. His name has already been mentioned when a contract of 100,000 euros was placed on his head by the presumed members of Rico's group. As a reminder, since Gwinnett was liquidated, most of his heirs have joined the organization of Rico the Chilean, who continues and leads the fight against the same enemies. Despite the knowledge of the danger he is in, Bololo does not hesitate to live fully. Detectives even photographed him in April 2015 while sitting in the stands at a game for his futsal club. Several liquidation attempts have failed to take down Bololo, who seems to have become an important target for Rico's team. In the encrypted messages exchanged between Rico and his lieutenant Noffel, on March 19, 2016, it emerges that the latter expresses his frustration about the fact that the decapitation of Nabil, which occurred 10 days earlier, had little effect on Bololo. Finally, his luck ran out in 2018 when he was liquidated. But let's go back to ZVVT's Knuppunt, with each victory of the club, the discontent can be heard in the reactions of the fans of the opposing clubs, who feel that they do not have the same budgets to be able to afford to bring anyone in their teams. 
the club's success reached its peak in 2017, when it became the Dutch futsal champion for the first time in history. At the same time, the authorities' investigations are also reaching new heights. It is becoming increasingly clear that the club finances itself through illegal activities. The detectives go there to follow the games live, paying close attention to the fans sitting in the stands, some of whom are already on the blacklist. Finally, in 2018, a thorough investigation confirms the suspicion that the criminal underworld had totally permeated the futsal world. The municipality deemed the potential risks too great and banned the club from training and holding matches in Amsterdam. Several attempts were made to play elsewhere, but the club had to disband because no stadium wanted to host them. The objective of the authorities was thus achieved. It should not be possible for criminals to have role models because they fund such a successful club. Before you know it, the idea may arise that futsal is only for criminals. Hose, who is considered the man who inflated the club with his money, has been under the police radar for years. It is remarkable that he is almost never officially identified as a suspect in any of the liquidation investigations, despite the omnipresence of his name in the milieu. He flees the Netherlands to Morocco, where he is sentenced to only four months in prison for identity theft. On the very day of this verdict, a stream of messages between the leading members of the Ho's organization is exchanged to keep morale up. Salam, brothers. Today we are waiting with great anticipation to see if our brother will make it. We failed. We did not show unity. And we fight for each other, so please never forget that. Karel is super important. And once the verdict is in, Abdel Hamid adds, we must progress. We are too immobile. We are a company. Don't stand still. We have to get Karel out. We can only do it if there's a mutual agreement. We must act. We have to make people crack. However, the situation of Hose remains surprising. He is still at large and resides mainly in Morocco. According to one of the main suspects in his camp, Hose is seen as the man behind the PlayStation that runs all his soldiers in the Netherlands. A rumor persists. The latter could benefit from the protection of the Moroccan secret services and therefore from a good relationship with the royal family, which is also suggested in some trials. In any case, with the passage of time, it is clear that the feud between the two rival camps is no longer felt with the same intensity in Amsterdam as before, especially since many soldiers will move to Spain where the missions will continue. And finally, it appears a little later that all this is only a foretaste. Indeed, we might have thought that since Nabil's head was dropped in the street in 2016, the situation could not get any worse. However, the cards of the game change completely because a new underground war is coming, but this time in Utrecht. There, the current public enemy number one of the Netherlands activates his own ascension. <laughs>